Let's copy this link. Doc Weez, what's up, dude? How are you feeling today? Forget the feeling of deja vu. What's up, Nightmare505? Thanks for coming to the stream. Today, I want to design another monster. I should have picked a different name. <clears throat> Vigigame. Game. I'm going to call this Live Video Game Dev Stuff. More monsters. Wanna make some new monsters today? What's up, Royal? So hyped for Resonance of Fate? I don't even know what that is. Hello, Heartless. Hello, Omni Slash. How are you guys doing? How's the therapy, Omni? Your maps are nice, Heartless. I like the lighting change. Did you use the the Tarax lighting thing? <clears throat> Did you use the, the plug-in command? Mr. Steckman, 9000. Yo. Plugin command is tint set, and then you use the hexadecimal code to color the screen whatever you want for the shading of the, what do we call it, the screen tint for Terax. It looks really nice. I really like it. I'm doing bug testing. I found a bug last night or yesterday that I need to address. I don't know if I'll find the solution today, but I'm going to look at it a little bit more. What am I making? A s simulation RPG. <clears throat> it's going to have your dungeon crawling JRPG aspects of it, but it also has like a simulation thing where you manage a town and you level up the town and you have to feed the people and expand and get new towns and then eventually build a boat. Item manipulation. Upload an SRPG Studio tutorial, please, says Minrod Bills. Gosh, I need to do that. Yeah, there's so much to do. Mm -hmm. 
you still need to cover the support system. I, there's a lot I need to cover, really, in SRPG Studio. I'm working on this game every day. And then, you know, other things. Public and private. Yeah, SRPG Studio is a really cool engine. It makes games close to Fire Emblem. It's the closest. It's mainly like Fire Emblem games, but there's a lot of games in that style. <clears throat> it's pretty cool. You can download the the trial for free, and it does a lot of things. I don't think you can export a project and you can't use any scripting. But man, it's it'll take you a while to learn it anyway. So that'll give you the the idea if you're gonna buy it or not from the from the demo. I mean it's not really a demo, it's the full thing. It's just it has some features stripped, you know, kind of stripped out. Yeah, that, those are very close, Doc Wees. They're very different games, but you could, using JS, make them like all of those games. The hardest may be to replicate tactics, because it has that 3D aspect. And SRPG Studio is strictly 2D. But maybe it uses, you can uh, add a library and then make it 3D as well. What amount of Fire Emblem? Mainly like the old ones, but since it uses JS, anything. Whatever you can code in JS, really. Morning, Silver! Welcome to the stream. It's good to see your face again. Three hours of overtime. Better get that, better get that coffee. Yeah, it uses JS. If it didn't have some sort of scripting support, I wouldn't have bought it. It's a very malleable and powerful engine, but it's not user-friendly. It, it's really not that user-friendly. It's kind of complicated and hard to get used to. Once you understand some basics, it makes sense, and it seems a lot easier. But... you're used to complicated, then it's right up your alley, Nightmare. Right up your alley. getting a feel for the game right now. I'm trying to see, does it feel too grindy? Does it feel too hard if you're on the right level? This is the enemy that has a bug move that I need to work on. 
So it shouldn't use a merge except for after dig. Byte is fine. <clears throat> it should only use emerge after byte and a single time. Or after dig, not byte, after dig. So it should use dig and then emerge and not emerge twice in a row. But what I see it doing last time is it digged, which is, this is working right, this is perfect, it disappears, we can't target it, it's under the ground. So we have to guard, or heal, or something. It emerges, does a lot of damage, that's perfect. But then after this, for some reason, it just seems to be able to use emerge. Also, it's like it stays in a loop of being untargetable. You see how we can't target it now. After using a merge, it needs to come back out. So I have to kind of look at our um, our code and compare it to, you see it's using a merge again. But then it's like in a perpetual state of being, uh, of digging almost. And being untargetable. So it uses emerge two times in a row every time it uses dig, and that doesn't make sense to me. It's using Yanfly's uh, tips and tricks video for the Dragoon's jump ability, that, you know, Kane jumps up in the air, and then you can't target him for a while, and you can't, he's just not on the battle, but then the next turn he comes out, lands, does damage, and then he's back in the, the battle. I took that same concept, but I made it for a, a little tunnel rat so that they dig underground and then you can't target them for a turn and then they come up and do damage and then they go back and they're targetable again. Should be the same thing, but I must have set it up incorrectly. Let's look at it again. You could go the Bethesda route, emerge rat damage like Pokemon Rage, just keep auto autoing. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to change it. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna change it or what I'm gonna make it be. I like the setup I have, I just want it to work right. <clears throat> Does it still have a dig state or something on? That was the claw state. What was the claw state icon? Yeah, it might be that. So this is a big bug. I think we'll end the beta test right here and start looking at that bug. That was a pretty big bug. So let's go to the states of uh, digging. Duration in turns two. What if I set this to one and get into a fight with him again? All right, let me set this up for testing. <clears throat> I'll go to my system. I'll change my actors to be Edmund and Jinx. And We can start the party here. <coughs> to initialize things. Actually, we'll have to bypass this. Let's start the party here. And just beta test the battle. I think everything should be fine. This is the shadow bat, this is the, the mole. So we changed the state of, oh, I got to hold up. Do you want to say the changes? Yes. But I also want to start the party at level five. So we'll just die. You love simulation games and you're hyped for this game. Cool. 
I'm working hard on it to not disappoint. So let's just battle the rat and uh, we use his dig and then emerge. But see that's, and then he uses the merge again? Like what? No. Okay. Let's go back to states. Turn in. So two was right. But then, let's see, maybe the enemy. See the tunnel rat doesn't even have uh, emerge. Like this is the weird thing. He doesn't even have that move. So he's not like calling it from his own actions. He's calling it from the state, buffs and state core. So if we look at digging, get the last index target. Yeah, it was that one. <coughs> it's for forcing action. That's the custom leave effect. So when the when the state wears off, it does this forced action. But why is the rat still using it after the state completely wears off? Do we turn this to action end? Let's see if we turn this to action end and that just fixes it. Whiteley, how you doing? Thanks for making it. Better late than never, eh? Welcome to Bugtown. Well, we have to not kill him, Edmund. Why you do this? Why you kill the rat? Why you kill Mr. Jingles? Here he goes, he digs. And we guard. <clears throat> but does he take action? <laughs> the thing is, he'll just be digging for the entire game. Like he's he's in a perpetual state of no action. So we can't target him. <laughs> and he can't take an action, so it has to be turned in. See? So I had it that way. Man versus machine. The one is supposed to be a zero bug town. Played Contra and I notified you live. What's up, Kay Zayman? So this is the landing skill, this is the target index, it's doing that right, but it's doing that every turn or potentially two times after the state wears off. The custom leave effect. So it's, we have a problem with forcing action, the cue of forcing action. For the, for the dig move. Well, the dig works fine because it puts the state on the, the creature. But the emerge is the, the skill that's not working right. Let's take a look at emerge. <clears throat> Here we go. This happens. <clears throat> Do -do -do -do. Target action, ensure nothing happens. Reset everything. Right? We're doing that.
motion, attack, user, opacity, float user, weight, action animation, action effect. So that's issuing the damage. Screen shake, wait for animation. That's the whole action. But why does it... Why does it do it? <clears throat> Let's change whole action to target action in the action sequence. Target action. Now this shouldn't really make much of a difference, huh? Because it scopes one enemy, so why is it doing a whole action? Whole actions are for everyone, right? So that makes me wonder, is it because it's a scope of one enemy with a whole action that it's doing that? So let's target ensure nothing happens. Let's get rid of that and make the target action this thing. Hold, oh, land and deal damage to all targets. Well, we're not doing it. Oh, this is our problem. Because we don't want to deal damage to all. We want to deal damage to one. So we're going to change the whole action to target action. So this, the problem was we're using whole action with one the scope of one enemy instead of target action with one enemy. This was designed to work with all enemies and whole action. So let's get rid of some of that and see if it works the way I want it to where it targets one. If not, we'll reverse it back to whole and we'll change it to the scope of all enemies reducing the damage formula, of course. He's digging, he's digging. He emerged, dealing damage, but is he going to do emerge again? He still has, he still has the, the digging state. Like, why did he do that immediately? <clears throat> do we change this to one turn now? And why is he not targetable? It appears that he is targetable. Do you see that bug? He's still technically digging. He shouldn't have done emerge at that point. Why did that trigger emerge? immediately why did that trigger emerge immediately that's the bug so we didn't actually okay so dig does all of this stuff follow action add state to the user finish without landing or coming up But see, in Dig, we set the opacity to zero. He should still be invisible. And it shouldn't have triggered. It shouldn't have triggered this. So I don't know what to do about this. All right, let's try it the other way around then. Can you dig it? Apparently we can't. Let's go with Emerge being a whole action. And then for target action, we will include it as an empty. So nothing happens, but we'll change the scope to all enemies and reduce the formula to attack times two minus agility. But we're gonna we're gonna also do something else plus a dot agility. So it's really like attack times three because their stats will be the same. All right, occasion battle screen. Really? <clears throat> All right, this was the way it was intended. All enemies whole action. Also, dig is supposed to be 
self cast, isn't it? Battle screen. Okay, before I change this one as well, we're gonna do one thing at a time. <clears throat> we're gonna change this next, because we updated it back to whole action. Doc says I could put the jump code into my game and test it like that. Well, I mean, that's essentially what I'm doing. I almost copy-pasted it and changed a few things. Here he goes. He's digging. And he emerges immediately, still having the state on him. So it, he should still be emerged, right? So it's, that didn't change anything at all. Didn't change anything. <clears throat> okay, let's turn let's turn dig into the user. Let's see what happens. Yeah, this action sequence is a pain in the butt. I'm just gonna guard. Go tunnel rat, do your thing and not suck. Doing the same thing. That didn't change anything. He's still untargetable, because he still should be invisible. He should be digging and invisible at this turn, not have done emerged yet. And then we have a turn to do something like guard or heal. And then he pops up and does emerge, and he's targetable again. So that's the bug. We're going to keep trying things until it just doesn't work. We'll say all allies, and then we'll say all enemies. And who knows? Who knows? Who really knows? Another thing, Drifty just make him opacity 0%. That's so clever because I did that. I did that. Opacity user 0%. <clears throat> Love you're on the spot, Rim Drift. Thank you, Silver. Come on, rat. Don't emerge. Oh, it emerged. It hits everybody, and that works, but <clears throat> something's still not right. Something is still not right. Let's say all enemies. Yeah. Another thing we can do is change the state. I don't know. We'll keep tweaking things until it works right. Or we give up on it. You're not supposed to bite, rat. Be a good rat and dig a hole. Stop biting, rat. Stop trolling me now. He's still doing the same thing. Okay. <coughs> I'm dying. Guys, I'm dying. So Dig essentially should be the user. He goes opacity to zero, adds the state of dig, and then the state of dig, or digging, makes it so you cannot select him, and then he has a custom leave effect, which means when this state is removed, 
then it uses this, it's going to reference this a skill, this is the target, and it's going to use skill 31 on the user, or on the target. So we're forcing this skill from the user to the target, which is working fine. But it's the problem with it is it's doing it before this skill is being removed. I guess the, the dirty fix is putting this to one turn, right? But then, is he still untargetable? No, the state should wear off. So we're trying the dirty fix, which is to just have it dig and attack. So it just becomes a single turn action sequence. Dig, goes down, hits everybody. But that didn't take the state, and he does emerge twice. What is even happening? And then he emerges a third time? <laughs> Wait, that was interesting. We make that his. What if we make that bug into the feature? That's his skill. It emerges three times in a row because he's targetable after that, right? So let's reduce the damage it's doing. Skills, emerge, no subtraction, and just make it do this. And we'll make it a one enemy. And with the whole action. This is not the way you do whole action. You don't do one enemy with whole action. But let's let's try that. I'm, I'm ready to turn this bug into a feature. Stream died for... Yeah, stream resumed. Oh, great. Thank you, internet. Anybody want to talk about how YouTube was down for an hour yesterday? I haven't seen that happen in, like, forever. Some people said it wasn't down for them. Like, it, I guess it depends on the region. Here we go. Dig. They pop out. It's a single target. Emerge. And then it emerges again. Bam. And then what? It does it again. Bam. Three hits. And he's targetable. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, a, it's a thing. It, it doesn't make it so that he's untargetable, but he appears there anymore. It went down globally. If you were already loading videos, you wouldn't notice, but when I got on my laptop, I couldn't connect. Yeah. I was trying to watch a cute video of a meerkat, and don't judge me, and it couldn't load. So I was like, what's going on, YouTube? Okay, I'm gonna say that is resolved. It's not my original intention of how Emerge should work. But it is going to be my compromise of how it's going to work. So they dig, they emerge, and then they emerge again. And then they emerge again. So it's a three hit combo. Because look, now it's not broken exactly. You can target them. I could make it a two-hit combo, I bet, if I turn it to... Oh, the state landed. That's not doing the right animation. What state is that? We need to change that state animation. <clears throat> so let's fix that bug. We found another bug right on time. State animation. What does he actually inflict? Dirty Bite, State Animation 111. Oh, I was like, Let's, we're gonna do this for a placeholder, didn't we? We may, we may have designed the State Animation for it. Dirty Bite, this was the thing. 
but we didn't make the state animation. So we'll copy this, we'll paste this to 177. I don't know, we'll have to do it this way. What? Thank you. Get rid of the sound effects and the flashing. Get rid of the first frame and the last frame. And then batch the entire thing so that the scale of it is down to like uh, 40% for everything. And we're gonna call it Dirty Byte State Anim. And then we go back to the state and change this to 177. And now when that happens again, it won't be the target shot animation. All right, we fixed that bug. Let's go into the emerge and change it to, change the scope, right? Let's go back to target action, target action. And just cut this and see if it goes to hitting twice and what that looks like. Doc Wee says he's trying to make a skill that one, creates a clone of an actor, two, adds a state mimicry state, uh, and three, after the actor acts, the clone repeats the action. That's interesting. Try using uh, SRD's summon core. I don't know if it still works with whatever version you're using, but you may be able to do something with the summon core if you find it to be compatible with your game. Other than that, you'll have to make a plugin for it or just event something clever. I don't have any ideas immediately off the top besides what I previously mentioned. Here it is, dig, it emerges, hits somebody, and then it does it again, right? Just two times this time. No, it's gonna do three times. It still does three times. Changing the whole action to target action changed nothing. Tunnel Rat doesn't care. It's gonna do what it wants to do. It's a three hit combo. Guys, we turned a bug into a feature. Emerge is now that. Just what you saw. Three hit combo. I reduced the damage. SRD does have a good sense of humor, yeah. He's a funny guy. SRD summon cores crash during combat 1.6.1 if an actor died, yeah. Does SRD post anymore? Yeah, he tweets. Follow him on Twitter. He, he tweets out jokes when he's bored like 3 a.m. in the morning. And various random things. But I think he's busy with, uh, I don't know if he's doing university or if he's doing junior college or what he's doing right now, but I think he's doing some schoolwork. So he's, he's learning up real good. Oh yeah, this isn't supposed to happen like that. Okay. we have oh yeah a bug where if you select Mars a female and you walk to the world map then it doesn't resize your sprite so here it is auto run player sprites actor images and we're going to resize everything into the scaled one for the character. Just the character changes, really. Huh. Is this why the face graphic doesn't show all the time? Because I'm changing the images after they've, like, loaded?
That's interesting. What we need to do here is have a switch for when the player selects male or female, right? So at the intro, the start screen, we have an event that lets the player pick, and we need to make a switch for to determine what the player picked. So we can have a variable if we want to add more. We're going to remove Battle Toaster probably, because it just doesn't make sense. It's kind of trolly. But we'll leave it for now. It, it defeats the whole purpose right at the beginning of the game where the player's decision makes a, a difference in the game. If they select Battle Toaster and then they just get admin anyway, that's like, you know. <clears throat> 1 point six broke all, so many plugins. If you go to the master list on um, the forums, I would say 50% of all the plugins there no longer work. A good strong 40 to 50% of them no longer work at all because of 1.6. Wasn't somebody making a mechanized battle toaster sprite? Yeah, Craig, the Unpro Pro, said he was going to make one. That's why I'm leaving it in for now. That would be hilarious. It would be hilarious if it actually had a, a nice battle toaster sprite. Let's make a new switch here. <clears throat> actually, we'll do it as a variable. This way we can accommodate for the battle toaster. This will be character char selected. And we will set it to one if it's admin. We will set it to two if it is selected uh, to Mars. So boy is one, girl two, and then mechanized battle toaster will set it to three. But for now, we're gonna set this to one. When we have the sprite, we'll set this to three. Okay, this gives us control. This lets us reference that condition in other places, like the world map. That's changing the sprite. our transfer. I need to zoom out a lot to see if I have any other events on this map. I do not. Okay. So I don't want to do this unless there are the player has selected that, that specific sprite, so we'll do a conditional branch, and we will say if variable character selected is one, then we'll put this in there, else, copy paste this entire thing, else if they've selected two, we're going to change Mars into the character sprite into Mars's resized sprite. So what I need to do is resize a default sprite from Mars, which I don't have apparently, but I've saved the JSON so I can make another one. We'll, we'll call it Mars, Mars, Mars default and then we'll put a note tag on it. And the note tag is resizing it down to 16 by 24, which is the same aspect ratio as what they have now. 
But maybe I should just resize this sprite down to 16 by 24. Would it look different? How is that going to look? Let's try two different things. Okay, so I'm gonna go hit OK for now. Hit OK. This one doesn't need anything because we don't have the third yet, so we'll take off the else on that. Apply, OK, game, open folder. IMG characters, find Mars, copy it, paste it, F2, change this to resize 16 by 24. So I'm still using Yanfly's scale sprites plugin. Now, if we select Mars and we come out here, we're resizing the stretch sprite we did with in Photoshop as opposed to the um, the chibi-ish looking sprite that we got for Edmund, which is being stretched through the plugin. Oops. Darn it. Okay, here we go. Let's see how that looks. <clears throat> Omni Slash wants to make a state that turns people into frogs. I have a tutorial on how to do that. I use chickens, but you just change the chicken sprite to a frog sprite and bada boom, there you go. So let's, let's select Mars. And the same intro happens. If we go to the world map, what plugin did I use for stretching? I'm doing two methods. Hey, that looks good. I'm doing two methods. I'm using Gadfly's scale sprite. And I'm also using a Photoshop method to resize something. It's a technique that Royal Crown Code showed us. Essentially, I'm stretching the y-axis of the sprite uh, by 150% or an additional 50%, right? And we need to change the one here so that it goes back. But then I'm selecting just the head and resizing that down to 75% of its original so you get rid of that chibi look. So we fix the outside and, and using that sprite works fine. In fact, I like it so much that I'm going to select Edmund 1 has been changed, but these are the defaults. So I'm going to copy I'm going to copy this one again and overwrite Edmund 1 with the stretch one. Because the, the head size is smaller and it looks better. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to delete... Actually, we'll just copy this code. No, we're going to actually delete this. We're going to delete this, admin1. We're going to copy this admin one and paste it. Then we're going to hit F2 and call this one admin one space 16 by 24. This is the stretched out sprite. Now when it references that, it 
it'll change it up. Let's test that out. So it will look a little bit different on the world map. Let's chibi. That works. Let's resize uh, Royal Crown Coat's Pixie Sprite too. Why not, eh? Copy this, paste this. We'll give it the same thing, 16 by 24. X by Y, right? Copy this, paste it here, change the actor to Jinx, and select the character sprite to be this one. Now let's take this code, go to the world map, and paste it here. Except when we go into towns, we change this back to this, and we change this back to this. And we change... What is she using by default? The regular one. Okay. The regular one. But maybe, maybe we'll, we won't change hers. Let's see how that looks, the smaller one. How does it look as making hers smaller by default and just leaving it on that one? So the face didn't change here. It looks too small, huh? You can't really see the pixie very much. It looks like a little graphic bug. It looks like more of a graphic error than an actual sprite. So we'll just go with that. That looks better. Oh, we changed it on this one too. That's right. Hmm.
even if you change the image to itself, it erases it on the menu. Which is so strange. So we've done some bug fixing and calling some bugs features and turned emerge into a triple attack with lower attack power instead of a more of a jump type of thing. It got, it got us off of the game breaking bug where we can't target him but he's there, invisible. So we kind of fixed it, even though it wasn't my intention of how it's going to end up working. Sometimes you just got to do those compromises to move on. Let's make a new enemy. Let's make a new dude. kind of enemy should we make now? Obviously we want to follow the same pattern of using animated SV sprites for the enemies. That's in our SV actors. Let's go to the bottom and make our way up. A griffin? A lion? I also got to imagine our surroundings. We're still doing mostly cave dungeons for enemies. A spider. We don't have a spider yet, do we? Let's go with this red looking spider. I'm going to hit F2 and then Control C. So I'm taking Hidden One Spider 3 PNG, the name of it. And I'm going to be using it in here. So. I'll just put this here as a placeholder so I can copy paste other stuff. Copying this, pasting that, taking this, and replacing the bat with the spider image, and then there we go. Now we give it a placeholder so it'll work, putting this here. And this is going to be some kind of spider. We'll call it a, a dank spider. Mikey Kima, did you say spider before I said spider? No need for spiders. Cave spider. But we have a cave fox. Cave spider, rats, bats, and subterranean slimes. The spider should have a poison attack. Isn't that a little cliche? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh my god, we're like on the same wavelength, guys. I didn't know someone got my video muted. Somehow my video got muted. Oh, that sucks. Mike Akima. Was the microphone or the audio recording when you were recording it? Or did it get like copyright claimed and then the person who claimed it muted the video? Cause that could happen. You think you just accidentally muted it? Oh, that's more likely. It happens. So many times I've recorded a video, especially early on, where I'd play for 30, 40, 45 minutes, an hour, and then I'm like, all right, bye guys, thanks for watching, blah, blah, blah. And then I look at the video, and it's just not even capturing anything. It's just an hour of black screen. And sometimes the audio works. Sometimes the audio, 
I sound like a robot, and I didn't understand that one for a long time. It was like, I'm like, what is happening? So like, several videos have been ruined. So I definitely feel your pain, Kima. So this is gonna be a dank spider, because this is a dank spider. And he'll use like water attacks because no one's gonna see that coming. So we're gonna delete his default attack. We have to give him three custom skills. Three custom abilities. So we got our sprite, we put our base stats in that will be probably changed towards the end. could do too is I could use game variables to determine their stats that will go into character customization that'll be a little bit more advanced and I don't know if people actually want that I mean people love customization but sometimes people want a simple story and like just make it optimal for me you know you don't want to overload the player I could just use game variables in a system that the player can pick points to allocate and, and this levels up based on their starting points. I don't know why I thought of this right now. Well, I'm trying to think of skills for an enemy. I'll put that on the back burner for now. Let's think of some skills that a spider would do. So a spider would have some sort of bite, right? We have a bite already. Do we have a mm, chomp? We don't have chomp yet, right? So let's make the basic attack a chomp. <laughs> because I like this onomatopoeia style of, of enemy skills. Pain effect. I like pain, the idea of pain. Well, nobody likes pain. It's, that can be taken out of context. <laughs> I like the name pain as a state for this spider. But Drifty, you said you like pain. A weakness effect. Let's give him his basic attack first. We're gonna go with Chomp. You might need to make a custom icon for it. Chomp. I guess we're going to be doing our A sprite of the day. Our A sprite of the day is going to be an icon, a very simple icon. What are icons, 24 by 24? So we're going to open up our games. Icon set. We're gonna scroll to the bottom. put on our our grid I think we're using 24 by 24 32 it's 32 by 32 I'm glad I checked wait subdivisions four
We have 32 by 32 for our icon set. So let's make a 32 by 32 chomp icon for our spider. Maybe we'll do more than one. It depends on how long this takes. Let's pick a palette. This one. It's not the one I wanted. This one. Okay, Nintendo, you win. Loading that one. Gonna go with, how come it doesn't have very many reds? I don't like this one. We need some reds. Rosie 42, that one. Does that have reds? Yeah, we got some reds. Here we go. We're gonna go with like this color. Oh, I know what to do. Let's uh, let's do this. What is it called? Symmetry. Yeah. Symmetry helps sometimes. I guess we could fill that in, huh? There we go. We'll save that as DG. Um, spider icon attack icon 01. Let's put it as a PNG. Okay, let's make a new one. File, new. What other moves can a spider have? We got chomp. We're gonna have painful bite. Or did I already include something like that? I might have already included something like that. Yeah, Alexander, you're correct. It's a, it's a remix of it, though. Music brought to you by ocremix.org. Paralyzed can be overpowered. Yeah, that's true. Unless you have a lot of party members. You want to avoid stun lock. Heartless Angel, you're right. Stun lock could be very bad. But if we make a stun, uh, um, an ability that the spider can only do once per combat, then it's fine. Web for paralyzed, dripping fangs for poison.
Maybe the web attack can cause a debuff that can be exploited by a Venom Fang Strike. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to do something like that. We're going to give the spider an ability that um, does more damage if the player is under the effects of a state. So we'll do a custom damage formula in the, in the damage formula. Yeah, something like that. Like if the if they're webbed, then they take double damage. Like it does like normal damage. It's like as a special move does normal damage. But if they're webbed, then they take double damage. I like it. So they'll have a chomp move that's just a regular attack. Then they'll have webbing. And um, well, right now they can't escape. You can't escape combat. Because dying doesn't mean game over, so escaping combat is just losing the fight and you get kicked out of the dungeon and you have to restart it. But you don't lose your progress, really. Take care, Silver. Get some sleep. Get some sleep. Working overtime is going to run you down into the ground. Oh, escape the webbing. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So this is going to be Chomp. It's going to use the new... Well, we didn't add it to the icon set yet. So we're going to have Chomp. We're going to have... Webbing. And it'll hit them all. Putting a state. Very weak attack, but mainly it just... like uh, it, it adds a state that's going to lower their movement. And if they're under that state, when the, the spider does the special TP move, then they take double or triple damage. We'll call it um, Thirsty Bite. Because spiders web their prey and then they drink their blood, right? Drink the liquid. So this will be a Thirsty Bite. So three icons. Will there be boss fights? Of course. I'd love boss fights. Right now, there's just... I've only got six enemies put into the game, so we're working on adding enemies. The problem with it is I want every enemy to feel different and have a, like some sort of strategy and, and have custom skills with custom sound effects and animations. So it takes a long time to make one enemy. So I think the bosses will be the same way and they'll come later. Probably instead of three moves, the bosses will have four, five, or six moves. I'll probably settle with five. The boss fights will take a lot longer, but I want the combat to be very fast. So like two or three rounds, if you're fighting things your level. So we got Chomp, Webbing, and Thirsty Bite. I like our moves for the spider. The Chomp is going to be the basic TP gain move. They gain 15 TP. Um, webbing is going to be their MP costing move. It's going to cost 70. And Thirsty Bite is going to cost um, 30 of their TP. Red Phoenix, better late than never, my friend. Thanks for coming to the stream. Uses, uses, uses. Chomp is a physical. Webbing will be considered a magical. Thirsty Bite will be considered a certain hit. Okay, Chomp is a tech. Webbing is an ability, and Thirsty Bite is a tech. Battle screen, battle screen, battle screen. I actually need to go through all these. Since I'm giving the, these to the player, I need to make sure that these moves are battle screen. Faint echoes, battle screen. Oh, first aid, that's first aid, always. Battle screen, battle screen. Unravel is battle screen. Sting, battle screen. Entangle, battle screen, battle screen, battle screen. Out maneuver, battle screen. Fang, battle screen, all of these. Concentrate, I guess that could be done outside of combat. Okay, so I got them set up. Just a couple of them were off. 
Chomp will be very similar to the basic attack. HP damage A dot ATK times 3 minus B dot DEF. Can critical and it's a TP generation. I need to add the icon to the uh, icon set first. So let's save the progress we did. Go back into a sprite and do one for webbing and one for thirsty bite. So we got chomp. And now we need one for webbing. Keep this one simple. I think that's fine. What do you guys think? It's just two tone. Simple webbing. What's my free time schedule? Well, Less and less. That's what I use for bows and crossbows. Weapon Unleash is an amazing plugin. I love it, Alexander. No background? Yeah, no background. Most of them don't have a background. Alright, I'm just gonna have to say that's good. It's good enough. We'll save this as the same thing, spider attack, but two. Got PNG. And we're going to do one more 32 by 32. This one is going to be the thirsty bite. So I need to somehow make like 
Let's do double symmetry. And do like the inside of a mouth, but like fangs with like some venom or something dripping. It looks different. I'll go with that. Save this one as the Spider Bite 3. Spider Attack Icon 3. Excellent. We'll take this folder, go here, and get these three icons. Actually, we need to open these in Photoshop, don't we? Yeah, let's open them in Photoshop. We'll take these three, open them, copy this, to here, paste it, that's one, take this one, copy it. side of the bounds at all. It looks like it's fitting perfect. Okay, so we're done with this one. We're done with this one. Now we have this one. You can copy it. We'll put it here. save this 
as our icon set.png, overriding the original, or overriding the current version. These can stay where they are. Back into the game, we're going to hit save. We're going to open up our database, and our icon set should have been updated. So there we are. We've got three new icons. So Chomp has one. Webbing has one. And Thirsty Byte also has one. Custom icons. Dolly, the soon-to-be chopped. Dolly. Oh, you know what? I had T record a sheep sound effect for me this morning. We need to do some audacity real quick, too. Let's do this. <laughs> yes! Yes! Okay. Let's get rid of this. And this. And mute this one for now. We're going to do some noise reduction here by taking a like white noise area that's just like static. And we're going to click noise reduction and get that profile. And then we're going to select the entire thing and do the same thing, but we're going to apply a 9 dB reduction. So that clears up that sound effect a little bit. Then we're going to limit this with a negative 3 dB, and then normalize it to bring both channels up to about the same volume. Looks like we're going to have to do that one more time. And you don't want to limit too hard or normalize past zero. You just repeat the process in it. You don't, you'll lose a little bit, but you don't really, really mess up the quality too much. Make it more depressed. <laughs> Is this T making that sound? Yeah. I asked her to do it for me, and she's like, okay. So I'm going to put a little EQ, I'll compress it a little bit, put a little EQ on it. Treble boost. And we'll do a pitch shift, bring it down a little bit. Bring it down. It's about an F sharp, we're gonna bring it down to a C. Actually, we're gonna bring it down a little bit less, just a bit. <laughs> no, that's too much. Pitch shift, just a bit, just a little bit, a little bit. 5%, 5%. Yeah, there we go. So it sounds a little bit different. And what if we reverse it? Sounds too weird. I'm looking for RPG Maker Games Forum or somewhere that I promote my game. The Bowie Soat. Yeah, you can go many places. The RPG Maker web forums, you can go to a link in the, dis the description below. Is a, a Discord server. You can go to self-promo your stuff. And there's also an RPG Maker MV specific forum. There are an RPG, there is an RPG Maker.net forum. There's literally a hundred resources you can go to promote your game. You can promote it on Twitter. You can make a YouTube video about it. Do all of those things. Do it all. Of, do it on all of those things. Good question. Let's export this audio as dg underscore t is sheep sfx oh one because she has another one here. Love it. We're gonna mute this and unmute this one and render this one a bit too. We're going to limit. 
normalize. That looks fine. And then we'll we're well, going to compress a bit this one. EQ this. Give this one a bass boost. And some reverb. This one I'm not going to pitch shift at all. I'm just going to export as that. This is going to be T is sheep SFX 2. Now we got a couple sound effects. You use Map Maker in Warcraft 3? Whoa, we got an old school here. Old school player. An old school gamer. Do you guys know that Defense of the Ancients stemmed from Warcraft? Not World of Warcraft, the strategy arc, uh, the strategy game. Warcraft. I think it was, there were, the concept was in custom games of Warcraft 2, but then it really picked up on Warcraft 3, Dota. And then they just made a game called Dota. But it was like a custom game that people made. Yeah, it was a Warcraft 3 modded map. We got our sound effects done for today. That's great. We did some spriting in A-Sprite today for our icons. That's fantastic. We finished looking at our maps last night, didn't we? Or yesterday. So what we need to do is put these sound effects in the game now. Let's go to here, and when we talk to Dolly, she's gonna play a sound effect. Play a sound effect. She's going to play T a sheep sound effect. What we'll do is we'll control the variable We'll use the item randomizer and we'll set it to a random number between 1 and 100 like it, we normally use it and we'll do a custom condition saying if the item randomizer is greater than or equal to 50 1 then it does this sound effect else it does a different sound effect the second one so when you talk to it there's a 50 50 percent chance that it uses either or this is a weird song it like keeps going yep 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 yep, yep. and it sounds like it's messed up but i think that's just what they think is clever editing it really just kind of comes out to be like a little bit annoying so i'm going to switch it it sounds like the sound keeps like chopping in and out. Dolly should be level 999 or 666. Yeah, I think so. I think I'll probably end up using GMS2 instead of RPG Maker MV. It says Nightmare. GMS2 is fantastic. I love RPG Maker MV because it's way more user friendly and it like reaches a wider audience. But GMS2 is fantastic. I love it so much. I've got some tutorials on it and there's just plenty of tutorials out there too. You know what's great about GMS2 is the help files are like huge and fantastic. We need to test out our sound effects with Dolly here to make sure that they're working right. She's the same level as character action button.
Dolly is Oh, you know what we could do? We could further expand upon the two sound effects. Because MV lets us pitch shift, we could we could really go crazy with this. Let's go with... Let's just go three below, three above on both. Those. Well, you know what? Let's make it an even ten. So two below... Yeah, let's do like that. So if it's 90 or above, we do... This one at plus 50, plus 30. Else, if it's greater than or equal to, I said below, but I mean above. If it's greater than or equal to 80, then we're going to do this one at 120. If it's greater than or equal to 70 it's going to do this one at 110 copy paste if it's greater than or equal to 60 it's going to do this one at 100 else if it's greater than or equal to 40 or 50. It's going to do the second sound effect. Wait, hold on. If it's this, else this. If it's that, else this. If it's that, else that. Else that, if it's that. Cut this, put it here. That's where I got messed up. And we change this one to the second sound effect at 150. Or no, 130, right? 130. What we should do is 130, 110, and 90. Or a hundred. Doesn't really matter, does it? No. Just shifting it. 130, 110, 180. And then we'll do the same thing for the second sound effect. 130. <clears throat> Copy this. On the else handler, handler, paste this here. It's greater than or equal to 40. One ten. Copy this inside the else. If it's greater than or equal to 30. It's this one at 100. <clears throat> Copy this on the else handler. If it's greater than or equal to 20, we'll go with 80, and then we'll have one really low one. If it's greater than or equal to 10, if it's not greater than or equal to any of those, but it's greater than or equal to 10, we'll have 80. Is that already 80? This one will be 90. This one will be 80. On the else handler, we don't need to do a condition. So if it's if it's one to nine, then it's going to be seventy. I think that looks right. <laughs> so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different sound effects from from two. And now, when we talk to Dolly,
<laughs> yes! Dolly is complete! Now she needs to be the end boss. She's level 666. But that's for another episode. What was I doing? Ear harassment. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll we'll leave Dolly alone. We need to do the the gardening system. <clears throat> we also need to do our player vendor system. We need to set up uh, the merchant common event. You know how we could do that. Let's do the random merchant common event. All right. So this is going to be. Random merchant common event. No trigger, it'll be called. And it's just going to work on a timer. And we just have to decide how long do we want his goods to last for. What do you think, five minutes? We should probably do like 10 seconds for debugging. Yeah, let's debug it. This is actually going to need a, <clears throat> a parallel process controller switch. So what we're going to have is, we're going to set up a new switch. This one's going to be called um, random merchant switch. If the random merchant switch is on, then it's going to do, has to do something, right? And it'll just keep running. It's going to constantly control a variable we'll need a random merchant variable and it's going to add one to it constantly so it's going to add one and then we do a condition saying if this variable random merchant is greater than equal to, let's say 600, that's 10 seconds. Then we are going to control that variable and set it to zero. Not hard clock, but random merchant. What this is going to do is run this clock for 10 seconds and then restart but we're also going to control another variable at this point we're going to say merchant blue selection uh, merchant selection variable and we're going to set this to a random number between one and the number of possible different show um, show loop obviously the more we put in here the more varied his outcomes can be we'll start with maybe like a 10 I think maybe we'll start with with five and expand upon it because I don't know how much time I have this is a this is a debugger anyway like this is our test setup so when we turn on the random merchant it's gonna keep adding 10 one a frame for until he gets to 600 That'll be about 10 seconds. And then it's going to set it back to zero and randomize this number. <clears throat> now we can control this number. Over here. And for the shop processing, we're going to do a conditional branch checking the merchant selection. So if the merchant selection equals to one, if it equals to zero, it's gonna do that. 
it's going to do everything. So at the beginning of the game, it's going to do everything. But when we talk to him, or actually our initialization will have to set up the merchant, right? Yes. So on side, inside of our initialization event, we're going to turn on that switch to start that timer as well when we start other timers, which will be inside the player's house is where I put it. Jinx joins. And that could start at the very beginning, but I'm also initializing everything as a timed event here. So I'll just include it with this other stuff. Control the switch and turn on the random merchant switch so his timer starts when everything else starts as well. So we basically copy this and paste it and create an instance for every possible outcome of that random variable. We set it to 1 to 5. So we'll copy this, paste this, set this to 2, copy this, paste this, set this to 3. We'll copy this, we'll paste it, 4. And one more time, copy, paste, set to five. So double checking, we have five, four, three, two, one, and zero. <clears throat> zero will sell everything, but then on every other thing, we're going to take off stuff. So we're gonna decide what we want him to sell. I think I'll use a simple method here. I'll skip one. So on one, I'm going to get rid of this, 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 this. And on two, I'm going to get rid of two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And here I'm gonna get rid of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So you get the idea. I've just removed some things. From each time. So he'll have random goods. He won't always sell the thing that you need. And that's the basic idea of it. I'll probably have it narrowed down so that it rolls like every minute or so and he only sells a few things. I like that idea better. He, that it should change faster, <clears throat> but he sells less things. Zero is gonna have everything. So let's say that he only sells pickaxe, coals, and diamonds for this one, right? And then he doesn't, oh shoot. For this one, he won't sell pickaxe, coals, or diamonds. He'll sell ore, salt in granite or something. I feel like he should sell food rations every time. Because it's so fundamental to not losing the game. <clears throat> so he sells like the mine stuff, 
Then he sells the quarry stuff. Wait. Coal, pickaxe. This is also part of quarry, is the pickaxe. Because I made it require that. Ore is not part of the quarry. Salt, granite, pickaxe, and stone. So this is quarry goods. Pickaxe, coal, diamonds, and ore is the mines. And then this will be like wooden logs. Raw fish. Um, food rations. Wooden logs. Spring water. So what do I have? Five items? I like that. Five items. He'll pick five items. This one will have... Oranges. Did I put wool in the other one? I don't know. Leather, wool. Not granite, not spring water. One, two, three, four, five. But um, I need to have food rations every time. Leather, wool, orange, apple, food rations. This one I can take off the ripe orange and put on food. Oh, food rations is already there. What about raw meat? Did I have that one out? Raw fish, raw meat, <clears throat> food rations. And I'll change these up over time. Wood log, food rations, raw fish, and maybe I'll have like the, the low tier ores, or I'll have stone and coal, and just mix it up. And I could just pick five items as long as I include specific things like food rations every time. And you see the process, you repeat that, and then when you talk to him, over enough time, it'll pick five different things. And it's not completely random, the five things. He has sets of things, and he picks one of the sets of things. Hit OK and save on that. Char is Aniko. Hello, how are you? This is a story event? This is not. This is more mechanics and system building. How are you today? How's your game coming along? <clears throat> Take care, Omnislash. So we need to test our merchant. Let's, let's jump into a game and test our merchant. Can you make me a town map? I would love for you to make me a town map, Wasif. I need several town maps. You'll make the template. Yeah, first, first seed material is so good. How many to be exact? Uh, one for the port, and then you sail away to a, a secluded island with one on it. And then from there, there's a bigger port that takes a lot of wood to sell to a, your enemies, your opponent's island, which will be three towns. So I need this one, another one, and our second island. That's three towns. And the opponent's three towns that you can eventually buy out. 
So right now, I need six towns. I have one, this one, and I need six towns for the map, for the game. Here's our merchant. And he's selling salt, granite, food rations, pickaxe, and stone. Now, if we wait around long enough, 10 seconds, really, he should sell something different. Pickaxe, coal, diamond, food ration, ore. There it is. So we have our the starting of our traveling merchant. And food, raw fish, food rations, wooden logs, spring water, raw meat. We'll change the timer on that so that it's like a minute. Every minute he has different stuff. So if we wanted to do that, what would we change? How would we make that work? We go to the common event, and instead of 600, we change this to 3600. So every frame of the game, it counts up, and one second is 60 frames. So you just basically go 60 times 60, and you get 3600, and that's a minute. So every minute, it picks a different, or it picks one of the five. It could pick the same one twice, multiple times in a row. So we'll have like 20 different selections and then he'll roll like a D20 every minute and his goods will change every minute. Cool idea. So we got that system done. Guys, that's where I got to end the live stream for today. If you missed most of it, it should be uploaded on YouTube very shortly. Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I love the engagement. You guys always have so many good um, suggestions and you give me good examples. Uh, we didn't finish making the spider enemy, but we started it. We named, we, we put the artwork in. We started making um, the skill. We haven't done the animation, so tomorrow we'll design the animations and link to the enemy and do some battle testing on our new spider enemy. It's our level 7 enemy. And set up the states for webbing and how Thirsty Bite will get a special formula. We'll do some action sequencing and... Uh, custom damage formula. Can we hear the snuh, 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 snuh before you go? <laughs> yeah, sure, I guess. Dragon bone spider someday? Yeah, I mean, we could do dragon bones. But I'm using animated SV enemies because I have a lot of them right now. If you guys like this video, you like these live streams, please give the video a thumbs up. Really appreciate that. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. That would be awesome if you like what I do and want to support what I do. I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at driftwoodgaming. Link is in the description below for these things. I have a website. I also have a Discord. I'd love to have you come by, hang out before and after the live streams on Discord. We're there every day. If you want a place to promote your stuff, if you want to talk to other like-minded individuals, that is available to you guys. That's going to do it for this stream, guys. I love you very much. Thank you for coming. We'll see you guys tomorrow. I stream Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to noon, every uh, Eastern Standard Time. It's Eastern Standard Time. Monday to Friday, Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. to noon. Snow, 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 snow. All right, guys. Thanks for coming to the stream. Heartless Angel, Baz, Nightmare 505, Dockwees, Alexander Burkel, Wasif, the B O E O S O T, Nightmare, everybody, Mike K, Kima, Ren Phoenix, Charizaniko, Omni Slash, Dockwees, I think I said your name, Heartless, Daniel Glover, All of y'all, thank you for coming. Royal Crown Code, always a pleasure. Inks. Nathan Miranda, Whiteley, Griever TV. 
all of you guys and everybody I missed. Thank you for coming. See you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye!